Hello and welcome back to the railway. Today we're going to have a look at Trying Hornby's electric locomotive, model R753. But firstly, we'll get this EM2, named Electra, back to the sidings. Now she's model number R351 and was available in this livery between 1961 and 65. And we'll just take her beyond point 18 and bring her very gently to a stop. And then we'll switch those and we'll move her back into the sidings smoothly through there, past the station in the background there. Lovely shot coming up into the sidings there under the double gantries. Now we have her safely in the sidings, we'll close points 18 and we'll open number four. And then we'll bring out this very attractive model, numbered R753. She was available between 1966 and 1970 in a number of variations. When first released in 1966, this model had two pantographs as we see it here today. By 1967, Triangle Hornbeard decided to fit one pantograph only. Between 69 and 70, she lost her white rooms and gained full yellow ends and got the BR double arrow logo. At some point in this period, she changed from electric blue to rail blue. Just before we have a look at the model, let's have a look at the box. It's a Trying Hornby box. We've got a nice big space here left to put the price. And here's the model number, R753, E3001, Bobo Electric Loco. We can see where the sticky tape's been to hold the box together. The box is in pretty good shape. Looking at the front end of the model, we've got Triang's D-shaped coupling here. Lovely large round buffers and excellent detail across the front of this buffer beam. The warning panel is just a yellow sticky label applied straight to the plastic bodywork. And we've got what may be a, a root code here. Lovely window frames, lots of detail moulded into them. As we move around the side, we've got the running number, E3001. And we've got these handrails either side of the cab door which are recessed into the moulding. Really quite a nice touch. Looking along the side of the model, we've got these lovely louvered vents picked out in white and this lovely BR logo printed directly onto the plastic. A little bit of under frame detail here. Other end of the model seems to be identical. Again, the yellow warning panel, the root code, this lovely detail around the windows and handrails moulded across the front here. Big round buffers, plenty of detail on this buffer beam and a D-shaped coupling. Looking down the other side of the model, we can see the vents have been replaced by glazed windows. We've got the lovely BR logo printed in white directly onto the plastic again. And we've got some underframe detail again. Now on this side, it's got the letter C on the underframe detail. I'm not quite sure what that's for. And this is the power bogey, which is cast in metal. And then we've got the dummy bogey at the other end, which is molded in plastic. Plenty of detail on both of those. Looking from above, we can see these beautiful white cab roofs at both ends. And then between the two, underneath the pantographs, it's painted white also. There's lots of molded detail in here, and we've got the selection switch, so we can decide where we're taking power from. Set at the moment for overhead, and then we've got no collection at all in the center, and then we've got collection from the track there. So if we just pop these pantographs up and have a look at them, they're beautifully sprung, but very, very delicate. We'll just raise this one up as well and have a look. And we'll just drop those back down again. Now we're just going to have a look at this model, which is basically the same thing but with a single pantograph. And somebody's had a go at trying to improve this by repainting it and taking away some of the detail. And they've had a go at putting wire handrails into and trying to repaint, taking away some of the cab detail. Don't think it's really improved it to be honest. And they've added some wire detail here. And again, this is a single pantograph version and it's got some additional, I think there must be air tanks on the bottom. So instead of pulling the other one apart to have a look, we'll, we'll pull this one apart to have a look. So it's unnecessary to dismantle the other one, I think. So having a look here, we've got the power bogey. And this is just a variation on Trying's Mark II power bogey. And there is no magnesium. In the 1964 catalogue, it had suggested that this model would arrive with magnesium, but it hasn't. And we've got the ribbed wheels, and we've got the collection plate here and the collection pickup spring, all quite nice. This model works really, really nicely by the way. And then again underneath here we've got the weight here, it's quite a heavy metal weight and we've got Triang's name 
R753, built in Britain. And here we've got the, the dummy bogey at the other end. And we've got sleeved wheels with open axle boxes. Again, really nicely detailed bogey. We'll just lift off the body moulding and we'll have a quick look inside. We can see we've got the, the glazing unit here at the far end. It's got some interesting numbering on it. I don't know whether you can see it. It's got 3300HP and the word loco at the bottom there. We've got glazing detail just glued in further along. And then we've got the, the glazing unit at the other end with the same numbering on it as well. It's got a little yellow with age. And we can see somebody's done quite a bit of work here with either glue or filler here. You can see the, the cable here takes the, the current from the pantograph on up to the switch and then down to the motor, depending on how the, the switch is set. So we'll just put that down. We'll have a, a look at the chassis. So it's just sort of a, a pressed steel chassis. We've got this lovely weight suspended here, keeping the weight low down to reduce the centre of gravity, I think. And then we've got the, the selection switch here, which we could see through the top of the body moulding. So we've got collection from overhead, no collection, and then collection from track. And it's quite a simple little thing. It is quite delicate. So we'll just put that back to the overhead there. And we'll just have a, a quick look at the motor. There we go, so that's just a, a variation on Triang's Mark II motor bogey. Both these coaches became available in the catalogue in 1966, though Pat Hammond's book suggests that they were produced in 1965, but just not available. We can see the seating detail here in the brake coach. We've got the running number of 35024. So this was model number R728, light grey roof, electric blue, from 69 onwards. These were in rail blue with dark grey roofs. We'll just pop this one down. And then we'll have a look at the composite coach, which is model R727. And that's got a running number of 15865. Again, we've got pinpoint axles, using design scale wheels again. And we've got built in Britain down there and Triang's name, albeit upside down. We'll just pop that down. You can see the corridor detail through the windows there, flip it over, we can see the, the seating detail. Now we would have had to wait till 1967 for the buffet coach and 1968 for the full parcels coach. This model, R753, first appeared in the Trying Railways catalogue in 1964. It appeared again in 1965 but didn't become available until 1966. I think this all has something to do with Hornby Double O and the acquisition of them. Now, they developed a very similar model, and I think the numbers we saw on the inside of the cab glazing, 3,300 HP, they were the numbers that Hornby Double O used to describe their model in their catalogue in around 1963. I think it has quite a complicated history, so both companies were probably developing a very similar model. This may be why the Trine Railways model was never fully developed as they knew they were getting Hornby Double O and the production work had already been done. They just took the existing model and altered it and cut costs a little. Got rid of the great big Greenfield motor, put in one of their motor bogies, changed the roof switch and put in metal buffers. A very, very pretty model. I think I'm gonna leave you this week with the cover of the 1966 catalogue, which just has a stunning picture on it. Thank you very much for watching. If you look back again next week, we'll have something else from a similar period. Goodbye now.